Still Rising is a title that has the premise of a Souls-like, but with a hint of Metroidvania. This title drinks the influence from previous Souls-like games, such as Sekiro or even Bloodborne, which have made this one one of the most passionate genres among the gamers. In this case, the player will be able to rely on a fictional cyberpunk story from the 18th century and with readings or re-readings of French historical events, a la Assassin's Creed style. All this while keeping the player in touch with the difficult combat tradition of the souls and the immersion lore which is divided in bits of information scattered all over the place. The player plays the role of Aegis, an intelligent robot designed to be a ballerina, but in this case she will have to fight other machines across a desolate France, in the midst of a civil war sparkled by political and religious strife, Aegis is sent by the Queen to seek out important figures who can correct the course of events and lead the resistance against the robotic uprising. At the level of secondary mission, it is possible to help various allies of the movement in solving personal problems and thereby strengthening their ties. The dancer's traits are presented in Aegis on contemporary style of combat where the tone and fluid movements between normal, strong and special attacks that leave enemies torn apart play an important role in the combos that are intended to be applied. This is in fact one of the strengths that drove me to about 16 to 17 hours of play until the end of the story. Each weapon is unique and differentiates between a fast or more robust combat indicated to the preferences of each player. In fact, this title is well balanced in the sense that you never feel a huge difference between damage inflicted and received on the character and enemies. There's a sense of constant progression and exploration is a plus for the items that you can find. It's possible to increase Aegis stats in a skill tree divided into six sections between damage and defense aspects such as durability and resistance against elemental damage such as fire, ice, etc. Although without great depth, there is an attempt to give the player the possible tools to create combat classes or a different approach to the difficulties encountered in this adventure. In my case, I choose a build that consisted of agility demarked by fast attacks, faster stamina recover and the premise of not only applying damage but inflicting damage that allows to stun enemies after filling the bar affected by this debuff. Also, in terms of combat, there's grenades with different elemental sources of damage, which kind of sweetens the experience. Ice grenades are by far the strongest grenades in the game. It is still possible to apply electrical damage, normal explosion damage, or even fire damage. Remember that the fire with fire enemy or ice with ice enemy is not a good attack combination. Finally, it is still possible to give edges a kind of modular upgrades divided between four different modules that can be changed whenever you want. This can be seen as buffs or boosts. Now about the Metroidvania aspects of the game. It comes as a story unfolds, as there are key areas that are blocked on a first pass. After the confrontation against specific bosses, the equipment necessary to reach the zones are unlocked. There are also several shortcuts that can be opened, thus facilitating movement between sections, as it is necessary to revisit locations frequently. There are some problems mainly with the jump mechanic, leaving a feeling of dissatisfaction somewhat noticeable after a jump that goes completely to the side. Facial expressions are almost nil and the fact that there's British individuals voicing French characters sounds, you know, a bit strange. In that box. Eh bien voilà. It is just as I suspected. With all of this, Still Rising delivers hours of fun to the fans of the genre or if you're just like me that find out Souls-like very hard, this is a great entry point for Souls-like games.